Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be looking at the front anti-roll bar drop links on an MGB. Now these are a common form of, of uh, MOT failure in the UK. The good news is they're, they're fairly straightforward to swap yourself and you can easily easily do it at home. Before starting the job I've got the car fully jacked up so both, both front wheels are off the ground. That's important because we need to make sure the anti-roll bar is loose before we try and remove the, uh, the, the these drop links. So let's get under the car and we'll take a look. So we've got the whole all of the car up in the air. It's important to do this so there's no uh, there's no stress at all on the roll bar there. If you jack up one side only, this would this would this will compress down, and it would be much harder to remove to remove the link. Um, looking at the link, it looks in fairly decent condition. The rubber at the bottom doesn't look like it sort of perished too much. Um, often they can they can break across across the sort of the top bit here, but that all looks uh, all looks pretty good. So what I'll do now, I'm going to get a a spanner to loosen this top part. This is all the, the, the sort of fairly straightforward bit. So this link bolt at the top generally doesn't cause much of a problem. That, that wire there is just for a wheel speed sensor. I doubt uh, your car will, will have that on it. So we've got a, a 9 16 so we've got a 5 8 one side and an 11 16 the other. So this will just, uh, just loosen this top, loosen this top bolt off first of all. Just bring that out with the uh, with the spring washer. So I've just come round. So I've just come round to the other side just to loosen the uh, the track rail that dropped the uh, the, the uh, drop link on this side as well. I just feel I've got a little bit of tension on there. I don't want to damage anything taking this off. So that's uh, that's both these the top bolts loose. So there should definitely be no no tension on that bar at all now. So let me just go back to the other side and see how we get on. Now the much, the much harder part is the nut underneath that, that's here. So let's. See, I'm just going to put a spanner on it first of all to see uh, to see what happens. Because what usually happens is the whole lot turns. So let's see. Look at that. That isn't actually turning. So I've been I've been very lucky there. But what I will do is show you the technique to use. If this whole uh, this whole assembly turns at the same time, but let me just get this get this loosened off. It might be easier to show you on the bench rather than down here on the car. When you're trying to remove the drop ring, the most the most likely issue you'll come across is that the uh, the nut will be seized on on its thread there. And when you turn and when you turn this to undo it, the whole assembly will start moving. Always a good idea to put a little bit of copper grease or anti-seize on this thread when you when you reassemble. I believe that bottom area should be left dry though with, with, with no anti-seize on that or grease. So I think the best method I've found is if you get a pair of sort of locking pliers, I'm just going to step these out so they're about the right, and then you can grip, grip this lower part with them and then use you use your spanner um, to, to loosen them. Obviously it's far easier to, to, to do this on the bench than on, than on the car, but I think it's quite hard to show you to show you on the car, but you will need some sort of vice grips or something to hold to hold this sort of spindle part while you undo it. So we've got the we've got the nuts all the way off. These do tend to be a bit a bit stiff to get out, so I've just got a, a sort of soft face mount. I'll give this a bit of a bit of a tap while you want to be careful. Not to damage the threads, I might just put I might just put this nut back on just for a moment, even though it's you know we shouldn't run any risk of damaging these threads at all with this with this hammer. Let's just see what it does. Alright, so that has that feels like it's come come free. They can be a bit stiff, especially if it's you know if they've been in the car a long time, you might need to get a, a little punch in there to, to try and So now we've got the uh, we've got the drop link off the car. We can have a good look at it. Often, often a sort of place to check is around the top here. That can that can break off. Also the bottom wells, and usually it's the rubber the rubber part here that perishes. That makes this uh, makes this link very soft. Makes it very easy to move. This one really isn't. That, that does feel very nice indeed, and it looks like it's sort of kept kept it sealed around there. So we haven't got any 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 mud and things getting into it. I think there has been sort of talk recently about these more modern style of drop links. This is actually off a BMW, it's not an MGB one at all, but I think MG Owners Club make one with, with these two much more modern style of, of links. Um, 
the thing is they are a lot a lot softer a lot easier to move so I, I couldn't really comment whether they're better or not obviously for my for my car I like the suspension as stiff as possible so I'll be, I'll be sticking with the original type with the uh, with the refitting procedure it really is exactly the same as as the removal one obviously I'm reusing my my drop links I guess other I guess if you've had to change these to the MOT, you'd be putting a new set on. So let's let's try and push push this sort of lower part in first. Again, soft mount. We'll just give that a little tap. It needs to go. It needs to go all the way in until you can see that sort of collar is right is right up against the uh, the wishbone there. On the back side now, we can see that our our thread has come through. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of the. Uh, the aluminium anti seize on there. I've not put any on this before fitting, so the, the sort of the, the section there is it is dry. So let's just paint a bit of that on, and then we've got a we've got a new spring washer to go on there, and then finally we've got the uh, we've got the nut to go back on. Let me just pull this up by hand first. So I've got the uh, I've got the sort of nut back in there. I've got a given torque of 60 foot pounds, but unfortunately I don't think I've got any way of getting the torque wrench onto the end of this. So I'm just going to give it a sort of really good pull up with a, with the with the ring end of the spanner. It's worth just checking at this point as well that the whole assembly isn't turning as you uh, as you pull this up tight. Okay, I have just got it lined up at, at the top as well, so the, the top link is back in, and the same on, on the other side. So let's just give that a, a good pull. I think that, that should be enough. So back up to the top again, we've just got the, uh, the top link bolt to go back in. So at the moment, I've just put the bolt in loosely on the other side. It's important to sort of get this, get this lined up on both sides before you start tightening these up. So that will just pull back in. I'm just going to do this loosely for now. It is again, it's 60 foot pounds torque on this fitting, but I don't like to pull that up fully until the car's back on its wheels, though. So for now, that's that's it for this side. I'm going to do exactly on the same on the other side. Just check it and uh, and make sure I'm happy. I'm delighted with the one on this side. It seems to have held up fairly well. Um, I think it's over over 10 years old now, so that, that that's done pretty well. As always, with any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Many thanks. Bye.